Hey folks, as I'm sure you might have noticed, our Labyrinth 40th Anniversary Collection is now launched on GameFound. And, and I'm sure that I know some people had some questions prior to the launch, and I'm sure now it's launched, you'll have some questions too. So, I've managed to capture the very busy uh, legend himself, Mr. Alessio Caratori, and we're going uh, to have a little chat about the Labyrinth uh, Collection, uh, and yeah, and ask him some of the questions that you've got. So, first of all, welcome Alessio, how are you? I'm all right. Thank you for having me. Thanks for your time. So let's dive straight in then. So one of the questions we had prior to this launch was what is included in the in the collection? And I'm sure folks will be able to see more now from the GameFound page, but if you're still not quite sure, what's in this collection? Yeah, this is the easy, the easy answer. Yeah, so the, the collection starts with the board game, focuses on the board game, the, the Labyrinth board game, uh, which you know, was almost 10 years, 10 years old now. Uh, it includes, it, as well as the board game, it includes the two expansions that we've made for the board game for the, for the years, in 10 years, gosh. Uh, so we've done the Goblins expansion and the Fires expansion. Uh, that include miniatures and rules. Um, and those are the core offer. On top of included still is the other products of the Labyrinth line, including the the adventure game, the role play game over there, beautiful book. And then we also have the card game, so the the, the card game with the illustration by Ralph Horsley, which is kind of like a tarot similar, similar to, to medieval tarot. And uh, then we have the Red East Any Worm game over there, which is a spin-off, effectively. The, the worm, the worm being so popular, so we had a sculpt of the and we, we done a fun little a little game, mini game, but it was big with that. Um and these are the included things in the collection. Uh, there is also a chess set and a and a puzzle, and a jigsaw puzzle, but we thought they were less of a game offer. So those are available as add-ons, but yeah. they're not in the, in the in the collection per se. And uh, that's the existing products. But there's, of course, new stuff as well. Yeah, and, and they all come in a, in a beautiful anniversary collection box as well, of course. That's right. It's a huge box that fits in a Kallax. <laughs> we make sure that it goes in uh, with all the layers of all the different games in there, yes. So I guess one question that I, I've certainly, as, as the social media person, the one question I think I've answered the most has been, why is it the anniversary? As the movie was released in 86, so it's, and it's 2024 now, so why is it the 40th anniversary two years early? We had that question, and yeah. indeed, the idea is that we would like you to have the collection, the big box, all the games in your hand in 2026, so that, you know, we, we do the campaign now, then it will take about a year to make it, make all the stuff, then shipping, distribution, et cetera, fulfillment, yeah. which means that this should arrive before Christmas 25. So the plan is by Christmas 25, you have a great present yeah. for yourself, for other people in 25, just before 26. And then in 26, you actually have a game as opposed to a, you know, a campaign in the year of the anniversary, you, the game is there in your yeah. hands. But of course, we, we didn't talk about the new stuff. That is of in, course, in, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the the the, the, the biggest, hmm, the, the humongous thing that is in there, of course, is the it is the new expansion. So the the, it's the all this stuff, by the way, all the new stuff is exclusive to the, to the game fund campaign. Yeah, uh, so an important detail. Uh, so get it now. Uh, the um, the main thing is the humongous expansion, which is the third expansion for uh, for Labyrinth, the board game. So much like the Fires and the Goblins, now the, the humongous is the third and the one that completes the expansion. Because the logic in the expansion often is to replace the uh, the standees, the cardboard standees in the game, because the game has miniatures, but also cardboard standees. But the expansion tended to replace the standees with actual miniatures. So with this final expansion, the humongous expansion, uh, you actually have uh, all the studies replaced because the biggest study, which is humongous, you know, the, the gate warden of the yeah. public city, uh, is now a miniature, a fantastic miniature that you can you can see in the, the page. It is, it's awesome. It's awesome. I, particularly, people seem to love the the helmet that comes off, and you can see the you can see the, the, the goblin pilot that kind of tries to control this big thing that is a bit random. So uh, the humongous expansion has basically can be used in three ways. It can be used just as for the miniature to just replace the the board game. In the board game, you just replace the stand D, don't use the rules. The second thing you can do with the humongous expansion is a mini game. It's the mini game called Who Goes. 
<laughs> which basically is humongous uh, is that scene where the where the group meets humongous and humongous tries to, to attack them and then uh, Algo comes to the rescue so is the group trying to first unhelmet humongous and then try to take the pilot and, <laughs> and chuck it off so it's a little mini game of it's like a cooperative fat mini game with uh, humongous as a um as an AI effectively is activated by cards and you can actually fine tune the AI to because some of the cards can, can be made more or less intelligent. Yeah. And uh, so what we're trying is fun. It's really fun to play test this because it's trying to achieve a 60% victory level for the good guys because you want to, you know, it's a cooperative game and you want to more, they, to win more than they lose, but the, the, the challenge has to be there. So we're playtesting it, and I'm sure the community can help us with that. And you know, we're trying to get it to that level. And, you know, it's fun. Yeah, uh, that's the that's the mini game. Of course, the third option with the, with the Humongous expansion is to integrate the mini game into the Labyrinth board game. So when you meet when you play the Labyrinth board game and you meet Humongous, uh, the Goblin City, the, the gate of Goblin City, normally is just one dice roll, opposed dice roll to, to to defeat him. While actually now you can play the mini game. Yeah, to, to to see whether you defeat it, so you can you can integrate it too, and that's the main thing. So that's the main exclusive new thing. But of course, there's a lot of other unlockable unlockable uh, goods that yeah. people can uh, can you know join the campaign, bring their friends in, and just try to unlock all of this stuff. And they come in the form of miniatures. We have some amazing new skulls uh, from uh, Johnny Fraser Allen and from other yeah. sculptors, and so so together we're gonna we're gonna hopefully unlock several of these uh, the first one that we revealed is the ball yeah which you've seen the the the, the bowie commonly dancing in, in the ball uh which people seem to love particularly that scene and that 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 miniature seem to be very very uh, people seem to like it a lot at the shows what we share yeah. uh, but we have other miniatures other sculpts that are waiting there to be we tease some of them if you look for the internet but yeah there's um there's more coming yeah um and also accessories, some game accessories that you know make the game a more deluxe version and increase the the deluxeness of the whole thing. Yeah, basically, all these are exclusive unlockables, uh, search goals effectively. So, so it's not just an anniversary collection; it's it's almost an ultimate collection. If you're if you're a fan, this is definitely the version not to miss out on. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It gives you all the all the game. Hopefully, will make it more deluxe, and certainly it finishes with the humongous expansion that completes the. The, the game with all miniatures. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So one question I had um, that's cropped up a couple of times is, I think we all know that I think when we're in and around the the, the board game community and where we're certainly within the industry, we think everyone thinks like board gamers, but actually there's a huge audience out there who are probably more casual gamers. And the original Labyrinth game was was it was really well kind of regarded by the casual crowd and the more sort of heavy Euro or Ameritrash kind of uh, sort of serious board game, if you like, maybe didn't rate it quite as highly. So yeah. you've, you've you've addressed that now. So can you talk us through that a little bit? Yeah, yeah of course. The, the the game is definitely a, for, for the fans, it's, uh, it's very, I mean, the, the mechanics are intentionally old. Is that nostalgia you know, yes. when, when, of the 80s? So it has to be that, as well as the, as the, the looks and the graphics, but also the, the game. It, it's a... A game from the 80s and uh, so the people that watch labyrinth and myself and play that kind of game in the 80s fantastic immersive people right like, oh if you look at the amazon reviews the people are going oh my god it's like yeah. me in the movie so that's great and, and is i mean it's a six plus in terms of age so sure. it's yeah. for families it's a family game but yeah so i certainly there's a lot of randomness yeah and uh, the serious game and the game that, the game that is you know confident uh, they like things like euro games where there's a lot of uh, there's less, much, much, much less one, or even no randomness whatsoever. Yes. Far more controlled. Uh, maybe they thought, oh, well, it's just rolling dice and moving around, which, you know, if you're not a war gamer, then yeah. rolling, rolling dice, having a laugh, etc., is exactly what you want. Yeah. But no, if you want, you know, a more deeper challenge, then uh, people was like, oh, this is a bit too, you know, random. It's so random. And uh, so uh, the thing, that, the way that I thought of addressing this is uh, in the in, in, in any included in the expansion in the collection, there's also a new rule book. Is it a, a booklet which has all the rules for the board game, for the expansions, for Ready City War? For the so it obviously doesn't have the, the RPG, which is a two hundred page. <laughs> sure, but, but the, the rules from the other game part uh, are are in there. Um, 
So if anyway, there's a new version of the rule, well, no, the rules are the same. I haven't changed the game because yeah. again, respecting all those people that love it. Of course, it. yeah. Uh, but uh, I've added a section, I will add a section that is the optional rules. And the optional rules will allow you to tailor the level of the randomness in it, make it maybe more challenging or anyway less random, which is yes. the main, main objection. Um, so the uh, I will, first of all, address the fact that at the moment the bad guys uh, whenever they challenge you, we meet a bad guy or, or a red doll, etc. That's a, a role to set the difficulty of the test, and then your characters will try to match it with their skills. Yeah. Only the dice they, they can they can uh, depending on how good the better you are, the bigger the dice roll. Sure. Um, so at the moment, there's a randomness on both sides, which obviously makes it very chaotic. It, yeah. Uh, this very sense of the word chaos. Yeah. It could be, you know, D20 or some occasion. So there's a very high randomness at both ends. So what we've done, uh, well, implementing is to say, no, okay, like, funny enough, like some of the customers suggested, is to say, no, fix the challenge level of, yeah. the, of the challenge. So, you know, a little goblin, challenge four, uh, the goblin king, challenge 12. Yeah. Yes. And therefore, something like that, obviously, will be fine tuned. But, uh, I would kind of try to get try to get on around the average rolling of the current level of challenge and make it a fixed number, so that it, that removes fifty percent of the randomness. Yeah. So you have uh, far more control on that side. Uh, the other thing is people have uh, argued that the because the, ge- the game revolves around finding the entrance to Goblin City, and that's in a deck of cards. It's in the bottom third of the cards. Yeah. Uh, actually, I press with it. Uh, but there is a certain ver- variability of how deep that card can be in that. So they say, well, if it's at the top of your of your area, then is the game is so many turns. If it's at the bottom, it's resources. And you know that game has been play tested a lot yeah. because it has to be a challenge. Has to be you have thirteen turns. Yes. You know, if, if a game play testing a game that doesn't have that level of uh, thirteen turns, then is more is easier having to make it work so that. You can win within 13 turns, and again, you're trying to win more than you lose. But yeah, you, you can be doing at 13 oh, with 13 turns. It is not an easy thing to, to play test. Uh, and uh, when we did that, uh, of course, we were accepting that level of randomness. I thought it was enough. Some people think it's too much. Yeah, uh, it is far. There's a too much difference between the when the card is at the top or when the card is in the, uh, the bottom of that that little third of the, of the game. So again, we can reduce. The, yeah. the randomness of where the card is by reducing the number of cards there. So it makes it a little bit more predictable. We still have an element of randomness. And all of these, again, will be play tested, fine tuning. I'm sure that the, the crowd will have more suggestions. And, sure. you know, if there's anything that is simple, doesn't, I mean, again, I'm not changing the main game. I'm adding options to make it of course. more competitive. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty happy to discuss and see what, you know, what happens. I think, yeah, I think it's fantastic. I mean, I, certainly, like, from my own personal background, I, I played games a lot with, you know, with friends and sort of, like, family members, people my own age, really. And that strategy is, it can be quite important. But all of a sudden, I've now got a seven-year-old son, and actually, randomness is what brings out those really laugh-out-loud moments and actually is what gives him an opportunity to win because maybe he doesn't have the same strategy that I do. So I think there's there's space for both of those things, so it's good to see that you're addressing those. Um, we touched a little bit about on the expansion as well. Is, is there anything else that you want to kind of add to that? Is there anything sort of about what the expansion's about? Well, uh, we already said quite a yeah. lot, but I, I can add that basically the, the expansion consists of a board. Yep. But actually, differently from the other expansion, this is a bigger expansion from every point yeah. of view. It's got a much bigger miniature with a removable helmet. They mentioned that. <laughs> and, uh, and it's got a, a board a mini board representing the Barbican in front of Goblin City. So the characters enter one end, and then the gate closes and Gimungo steps out. As, as, so you have Gimungo on one side, the characters coming out in this square area. The walls are all spiky and there's blades and spikes everywhere. And basically the first first the three the three characters, uh, so Sarah, Ludo and Sedidimus enter the, from the door while Hoggo is coming behind. So he's coming from the walls uh, of Goblin City. So he starts in a different position. And Humongous, basically, I, I can go a bit more, a little bit more into detail, but it has the deck of cards that are allowing you to advance or rotate or uh, swing with the axe. Yeah. And basically, it will do this in a random order, but the rotation card means that he always tries to increase the number of characters in the in the axe range. And if he can't, then it tries to increase the characters that you can see. So he rooms <laughs> up and what secret, which is vital. For yeah. the characters, because what you want is you want to manipulate that. You want to go and kind of 
offer somebody as, as a decoy, as, as a target, yeah. so that Yogos mostly will advance towards that target. <laughs> because the way to attack him is to get behind him. Yeah. So the character had to go behind him, and first you need clever character to go behind it, because how latching the helmet is about your uh, wit yeah. skill. And uh, so you want like Sarah or Hoggle to go behind and take out the helmet. And this, the, that is the first part of the game, where you, if you manage to unlock the helmet, then the helmet is removed, and then the pilot is vulnerable. But at that point, you don't need you, you need strong characters. So you need characters with yeah. a high level of brawn. So Ludo is your best option, but Sandidimus is also very good. Sandidimus is brilliant because he's, as well as being quite feisty and being able to quite remove the pilot quite easily, he also is very good as a decoy because yeah. he's very fast. Yes. So you know, he kind of goes there and goes, oh, well, I'm here, and he kind of goes there, and then he jumps away. So he is very good at uh, decoying, driving decoys. So by using the stats of the characters and doing the first the first the helmet and then the then the pilot and the different skills needed and and more probably you can also card count because the humongous has 10 cards activates twice yeah uh, and so if you remember what the five the first five cards were then you can kind of predict what the next five cards are going to be so you can kind of have an idea of what he's going to do like, yeah you know, he advanced a lot but didn't use the axe in the first five right maybe now he's gonna use the axe a lot but he's not gonna move as much and so you you can read cards manipulate by moving and there's an element of randomness again because obviously yeah. there's tests to remove the car as a course yeah. thing there was tests to jump out of when the axe tries to hit you and if you're hit you get propelled in a <laughs> random direction like a puppet as you are <laughs> <laughs> so, any strategy and and, and fun and randomness and, yeah like, like the main game of course it sounds amazing <laughs> yeah you, yeah it sounds it so you mentioned as well about the, these sort of this stuff being exclusive to the game found campaign, uh, and, and how some of the um, some of the card standees, if you like, have, be, have become miniatures now. And, and these are not just for collecting; they are actually part of the game as well. So the uh, the, the 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 ones in the expansion, the existing expansions, yes. have rules. Yes. You can use them just as miniatures and use the board game and yep. just replace them. You can collect them, of course. Yes. <laughs> if you're collectible, I know people have made armies with those goblins. <laughs> and, but, but, so there's a collectability element. Yes. They have gaming elements. Kimungus has gaming elements. The the new miniatures in the the, the, the skulls that are unlocked yeah. have a mix of game use or yeah. pure collectability. Yeah. It would depend. And also depends, I guess, on the what the people would prefer. But yeah, I think there it becomes more accessories and yeah. pressure, less function with with the with new miniatures. Yes, oh, I think it's sort of when it's something you're passionate about. Co- collecting things is never a bad thing either. To be fair, is it? Um, there are there are there are awesome scouts. Yeah, um, and the campaign has just started now. Then, so how long will the campaign be staying live for? I think it's uh, until the uh, beginning of August, Gen Con. Time. So I think just after Gencon or at Gencon is like the, the last hurrah and then after Gencon it ends. Yeah. Excellent. And, and, and I, I guess if if folks hadn't guessed it from, from this chat, you're hugely passionate about Labyrinth. I mean that that, that is written written all over everything that you've done for these games over the years as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so I think it's it's reassuring to know that if if you love Labyrinth too and you're you're looking at this game found um campaign because you love Labyrinth. It's been made by people who love Labyrinth as well. So yeah, yeah. I think that's deeply, deeply yeah. passionately. Yes, <laughs> Labyrinth. A film that has a lot to do with my career and what I am and who I am. It is yeah, it's been very influential in my yeah. life. Amazing. Well, Alessio, I, I think that's covered the vast majority of the questions that we've got so far. No doubt, folks will have more questions. You can absolutely pop those questions in the Game Found campaign. Um, and and ask them, and, we, and we'll try to get back to you. And if there's enough questions cropping up, we can always do this again as well. And, uh, yeah, and do that some of those. Yeah. So for Happy now, time. thank you very much, Alessio, for your time. Uh, thank you to everyone who's watched this as well, and thank you for those who've already backed the campaign. And to those who haven't, please do check it out. So thanks again. Take, Take care, you. everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye.